Hoffman Foundation in Kansas City, Missouri. We're a group of organizers that, that volunteer to show up every week and, uh, and make this thing happen, together with Ray White and Julian and, uh, and Dave and Brittany and, and, and Marat on uh, camera. Thanks for being here today. I'm Karen Eagle, and uh, I teach entrepreneurship at Old Dominion. So, anybody new? Here today. <laughs> All right, our presenter. Uh, Michael Borm is going to talk about his business, but before that, let me ask if anyone has any um, any news for this week or any upcoming events to tell us about. I would say come out and share one of your uh, One Million Cups alumni on November the 14th at the Silver Library. He has been selected to be one of the five. Oh, awesome. Nice job, Andrew. Very, very for those of you who have seen the presentations, Bob's been there before, Marat's been there a few times. Probably these are good resource people to see what to get a kind of read on the uh, judges. And help, help your alum out as they compete for $757 and up to $10,000. <laughs> but also, Marat did a wonderful job at the NATO competition. He didn't make the final, but he did an extremely, a very nice presentation and we'll soon have those archived. Two teams won, one from UK and one from Old Dominion University. Awesome. Old Dominion University won the Hiller Award, took home at least, right now, at least $15,000 in cash, another 10,000 services. We just got a phone call today. There's some other people looking at them, and they did well, and we had a company from the UK that's gonna to go to the Transformation Conference in Brussels, where the United States got to where it's gonna be held. So, and thank you for everybody who came out to the NATO competition. That was an interesting thing. So, yeah. We also have the, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say that uh, our friends at 1701 co-working at the beach on November 16th from 6 to 9 are having a technology consultants, clients, and startups show and tell. Oh. And they're looking for presenters down there. And uh, I'm sure you can go to their website, 1701. Uh, and find out more, and it's also, they have it on their Facebook uh, page as an event. That's uh, November 16th. Awesome, check it out, 1701. Um, I believe also this week on Thursday night at Old Dominion, they have the Hall of Fame Awards for um, entrepreneurs. So no, that was uh, right before the... Did we already do that? They already okay. did that. No, I was at, I've been out of town. That was okay, on the, never mind. That was the 26th of November, the night before the 27th. So isn't there something Thursday night? Well, Thursday at 11 o'clock, they have the grand opening for the Monarch Way, yeah, which that. is um, on Monarch Way. It's called the Monarch Way, uh, which is a, is a is sort of a co-op for student entrepreneurs to sell their goods, things to people who are um, either current students at Old Dominion or recent alums. So they do have the Biz Expo coming up, I think, 8th or 9th. That's what it is, yes. The Biz That's what Expo. I think you're thinking about. Yes, the Biz Expo, which is next week with the student uh, businesses and uh, alumni businesses at Old Dominion. So that will be during the day. I think it's like 11 to 3, something like that. So we'll, we'll say more about that next week. I think that would be the important one. Now, so I don't know anyone's been to the airport, but Full Belly Delights is on the... Oh. Get out! Yeah, yeah. right yeah. where you're coming down the escalator to baggage claim. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's nice to know. Yeah. Well, Julia? We'll be hosting on Wind at oh. my office next Wednesday. Oh, Four excellent. Six. Excellent. Where's that? Uh, I'm on Hoffa okay, Building, so 11th floor. Okay, excellent. So, excellent. And we'll say, down. yeah, so it's next Wednesday night. Right? So we'll, we'll say again next week. Just to make sure. Okay, one last. I, I've, I've missed y'all. My goodness, I haven't been here. I know I've, been, I've missed y'all. So, of course, tonight I have my, my medical doctor coming in to speak at Virginia Wesleyan at 7 o'clock. Thank you for coming to an event. He, he can tell you there was no sales pitch. It's education. So it's vitality with one simple change. He's going to be sharing science and um, ways to increase your fruit and vegetable intake. How about that, stay healthy? Sounds good. All right. Without further ado, yeah. Michael right, Boardman, so who is gonna talk to us today about his new, his new business. So yes. I'm gonna give you the floor, I'll give you the one minute warning just Perfect. to let you know how much time we've got. Perfect. Well, you thank you all for having me here. Uh, my name is Michael. I've been working in revenue operations for my entire career. And I recently had a chance to join a company called Scale Up On Demand um, earlier this summer. I've been working with Scale Up Demand, and the, the, the reason why Scale Up Demand is, is around is there's a, there's a market for people to effectively use their capital. Bob, as we just spoke about, 
there's definitely a, another opportunity to go before capital and getting a raise of funding, getting around of funding, but nonetheless, uh, what we're gonna focus on today is sort of our pitch and how we test the market and why we're even here today, right? It's about testing your market, testing your value prop, and getting feedback, so that's what I'll ask for at the end of, uh, end of our time today. So, um, really, as you are an entrepreneur, you're gonna go on a journey, right? You're gonna go on a journey where sometimes there's a lot of things that keep you up at night. You may not have cash, you might need cash, you might be a product development person, so you may not have sales experience or marketing experience. You may also not have enough understanding of who your potential customer can be or your value prop is for that potential customer. So what we, what we do at ScaleUp is we are there to really make sure you get a good night's sleep. And we're not talking about a sales ambient or anything like that that can really help you just knock you out for the night. We're talking about long-term fixes. And those long-term fixes can focus around getting predict predictable pipeline and revenue and customers in the door. And what we're talking about is a, is a long-term growth strategy using an omni-channel strategy. So if you think if you're making calls, if you're cold calling, right? Cold calling is one way to do that, right? Email's another, LinkedIn's another, text message's another, social's another, there's so many different avenues to do that. You need to test those on each individual market. And I was talking to someone a little bit earlier it may not be calls only anymore, right? If you're talking to a financial person, they may not even answer the phone. But how are you testing and how are you testing those speeds? It's all about sales velocity, and that's a, that's a term that we use. How do you measure that sales velocity, and how do you test that? So that's where we work on our, your marketing and sales strategy, is by testing these value propositions between each, each specialty, each vertical, or each segment of the market. So that, that's one side of it. The other side of it is you gotta build the infrastructure. So in revenue operations, and what I've been focusing on for my career is how do you get the right metrics in place now to scale later, right? Sales velocity is the easiest one. It's a couple of quick tweaks into your CRM, and you can get that very quickly. And that gets your feedback loop back into product development, right? If you don't have the right message for, let's say, a financial vertical, you can build that, build that back into the product as you go through. And then the last one is is as you are getting to your next round, yes, there are metrics, life, cost of customer acquisition, lifetime value, how do you actually decrease those, those, uh, those metrics to help you get the next apple and raise your, raise, your, uh, raise your funding? So, we set up in three different roles. There's a sales executive, a sales, ex and a sales ops analyst, a revenue operations analyst. I'm on the, on the right side of that, but the sales executive will come in um, and, and really focus around what is your total go to market and how do you accelerate that? What do your comp plans look like? How, how are you going to do your pricing and do pricing analysis? Sales reps, we use experienced sales reps as business development reps. So how do you develop that pipeline and how quickly can you develop, develop it and test those different go to market strategies? And then lastly, on my side, we're talking about your CRMs and your verticals uh, and really understanding how to get all those comp plans and drive the most efficient way to, to drive your sales. So the, the great thing is you have options. Uh, you, can, you can do a couple different things. You can go it out alone if you're a tech, technologist. You can go it out alone and just start going to market. But if you have legal help, you're gonna call a lawyer, right? If you have, if you have a problem with your sales pipeline, you're gonna focus and partner with someone like us who can really help you get the questions quickly and get them out of, out of the market to give an understanding on how to sell quickly um, and with our experienced sales professionals and our operations professionals, get your strategy that you can replicate over time and grow your business. So uh, there's a, some quick returns on investment. Um, we, we are seeing with our clients a uh, five, five to 10% increase in win rates and then an overall decrease in, your, uh, in the time to sell. So that's how we've been focusing on. Um, and then um, really all I'm looking for you guys today is, is, is to get feedback on how we did because we like to practice what we preach, right? We're, we're testing the market with our, with our clients and this is exactly what we're doing here today, right? Bob just gave some great feedback on how also we can shift over time. But with that, that is all I had to cover today. So I appreciate the feedback and I think I'm right on time. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just observing. Is it Mike or Michael? It doesn't matter. What do you prefer? Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you doing? 
I really, uh, when you gave me a presentation, you, you gave me a, a slide, I saw everything. I bottom line, 140 words or less, what is, what are you doing? I, I did pick that right, right clearly, right off the top. Okay, so what Scale Up is focused on is increasing your actual pipeline via a sales rep or setting up a sales operations function if you do not have one. And so you provide sales consulting or? We do, that's correct. So you're, you're trying to fill the gap where most that I run into startups, they're worried about their idea, they're worried about their product, the, especially the universities, they're worrying about the research and while they're going through all this and maybe figuring out how to go up online and get a business plan, that you're throwing stuff at it, right. uh, they're not thinking about how they're going to sell the stuff. Right. So you intervene at that talking, point exactly. as the sales experts to right. come in and help them develop and do what, A-B testing and all that kind of stuff? Right. 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 Like, that's what I'm just trying to... Yeah, 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 no, that's, that's, that's fair to do that. So you're actually that temporary sales agency that comes right up front before they decide to hire their salesperson Correct. and commission all like that. Correct, because, I mean, there's, of the three roles that we have, right, uh, there's typically, when you're going out and you're a technologist, you're trying to find the unicorn that can do all three, yeah. right? And as a consumption-based model, you don't need $150,000 a year, either sales executive come in, and I know that's low, or a sales rep doing the same money, or a sales ops, which is 100 grand, right? that's $450,000 for a annual year of just cost just to set up your sales function. You need that on a consumption basis, right? You may need a sales executive for 20 hours a month, probably need a full-time, not even a sales rep, but a, a, someone who's building your pipeline, because as a, as a technologist, you are probably still closing your own deals, right? There's not enough traction that you need a, a full account executive. And then lastly, sales ops. I mean, one of the last clients I was on was at 20 hours a month. You just need a little a couple tweaks to your CRM. You don't need, you don't need the whole Hold breath, but yes, Where most of the time the sales rep is the owner or Correct. the idea. Correct. Correct. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a, a comment and then a question. I, I can't see anything on that slide. Yeah, it's okay. terrible. Uh, not, so it's just a white blur of me. Yeah. So you need to refine that, get half of that crap off of there, and zero it in on a better. On a better slide. Probably we're all yeah, we're all right. Yeah, well, the other thing is, how do you? Okay. And and uh, it, it, ten slides. Tw and this is when you're presenting to when you think you have an hour, twenty minutes, right. and uh, thirty point font. Okay. And and I like the way he puts it. He says, take that um, the highest number of the, the highest age of somebody who might be in the room. And divide that by two, and there's your font. So unless your person is 16 years old, you shouldn't have an eight-point font. <laughs> Very true, though. It said, that, and, but you know, and, and I, I, because I teach, the students put out all the words up there, and we can read faster than 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 you can talk. So really, a lot of times people put that up there for because it, it gives you the talking points. Right. So you just have, you, and you know this, because I can see that you know it, and so all you need is, is sales executive, sales rep, and sales op. And then take all the rest of the words away. You have three boxes. We can see that. And it's in a colorful yeah. box, and now it looks great. Good looking slide. And then there's your prompt, and then you know what to say about each one of them. And that, that, would, that would be kind of just a general comment, but, um, but you had a great presentation. And I want to get back to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, no, it's not just me. I mean, <laughs> I know I'm old, but it's but just grumpy. Uh, it's just grumpy, yeah. <laughs> the other thing is uh, you didn't tell us how you charge your customers. Is this an hourly or is it a per package? Or how do you do that? So it depends on what the client needs, and that's where we focus on the consumption-based model. So um, we each one is built in on a certain hour, hourly rate, but depending if you need a sales executive for, say, 20 hours a month, um, that would be packaged with a sales rep who is on a six-month contract. But the specifics that we can talk after if you want to talk about specific pricing or specific rates. Did I get that, Art? So you're... Selling your time, yes. Instead of uh, uh, taking a percentage of the improvement in, in corporate performance, that's correct. Uh, have you thought about taking uh, the, uh, the risk of a higher, higher pay, higher payoff, and and at a higher risk? Uh, it's certain and because, because you know entrepreneurs hate to pay consultants for their time. That is a pain in the neck. You know, because there's no way to evaluate. Right. Uh, what am I getting for that investment? Right. And so, you know, you need to have have some kind of performance-related 
uh, to your charges. Right. And, and instead of just buying time from, from somebody, you know, uh, that's kind of boring. Right. And, you and if you think of our total value of a customer, if, if we're doing a, a valuation on a performance and it's long term, it maybe the pipeline that we, we gather for you takes six months, but that return is a year because you have a year long sales cycle, it's a year and a half. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't necessarily wait a year and a half to get paid, though, right? Uh, that's, did I, I just want to make sure you got that right. Because oh, our, our contracts are six to nine months. We're not in there for a great deal of time. That we want to make sure we, I mean, we still have to get paid. And then ultimately, if we have to wait, say, a year and a half to get paid back based on the accelerator, uh -huh. that's not necessarily what we're focused on. Yeah, that means uh, that you're going to have to finance your own time up front in, right. in, in order to get a higher payoff later. So I'm in professional sales, and I get a salary plus commission. Yeah. And uh, so you're obviously in the sales world yourself, so you understand that. So I'm an entrepreneur coming out, it and it's a nerve-wracking time. I'm trying to get finance together. I got to figure out the technical part of my product and what my pricing strategy is, all that kind of stuff. So there's value in what you're doing because I'm going to tell you that you've hit on something that probably kills most entrepreneurial businesses. They don't. They're technically got something decent in their hands, but they have no idea how to sell it. So I think it's a decent idea, but if I'm sitting in their chair, I'm saying, okay, I'm going to hire you and pay you some sort of consulting fee without a performance thing. It's, it's, a, it's a big flag for me. I'm not going to do it. It's a hard yes, sell. Because, yeah. So I really think that you should consider doing some sort of blending of the both. Sure. Because I understand you can't invest all your time and just be 100% commission based um, but if I'm sitting in the new entrepreneurs chair I can't afford to and I want to see some results okay and you need to be vested in those results yeah. I recently started a company and one of my biggest challenges is to find the best way to get my information into the potential client's hands whether it's email Facebook LinkedIn whatever so that's kind of I can relate to what you're saying do you have any clients right now you can give examples of how you guys programs work? And also, I'm, I am curious, like sample pricing, just give it like a ballpark of what you guys are charging. All right, so the first one, just sort of how we work. So we're working with a marketing firm uh, out of uh, South Carolina that, that process books. So we're doing the whole the whole sweep right now. So a sales executive has come in. Um, they have, did not have a, a BDR team, business development team is what we call it. So. We've taken each BDR out of each different vertical, is what we have it, and we've established, okay, here's your new go-to-market, here's, every every time you're qualifying, right, there's a specific line of questioning, no matter which vertical you're going down, right? So the first side of it is defining that go-to-market strategy. The second side of it is, uh, we've used one of our sales reps, um, who's out of Charlotte, is now prospecting, cold targeting, prospecting, in um, on a full-time basis. Um, so he's going through the verticals, he's following up on leads, he's creating his own leads, making lists, and going through that way and actually prospecting. And then for me, what I've been working on in a specific client is, uh, they do have Salesforce, which is, makes my life a heck of a lot easier. So um, one of the things that we put in just last week was that sales velocity metric that we were talking about. Um, and really, as, as we go through, I'm now going back through all of their data for the last couple of years and identifying what is their next market? So they have a couple different market segments. So we went back and uh, defined which market or subcategory sub sub they're going into that now Tyler, the sales rep, will be able to go prospect in and help accelerate through. Um, pricing, just, we, we can talk about that after on how that works. We do do assessments um, that are a small one-time fee that- Of how much? Um, of 3K, they're 3K. Thank you. Um, so we, we can sit down and make sure there's a mutual fit on both sides. We can see which go-to-market strategy you're using now. Do we need to refine that? Um, what's your operation strategy right now? How do we need to refine that? And then scope out what a long-term engagement would look like. So. so who is your ideal client? Sure. Like what, what does that look like? So when we go outbound, we focus on anywhere from zero to 30 sales reps and SaaS customers, software as a service customers. That's what we do when we go outbound. Going inbound though, um, in referrals and anything like that, uh, we've worked with a couple of uh, solar energy firms, uh, one's out of Colorado, um, 
and it ranges on in terms of what technology. So, so the reason I ask that is because when you're talking about entrepreneurs, they're bootstrapping. So, right. you know, when you're talking about the price, they're not gonna. It's not gonna be something that you can say. So, are you looking for that zero to three years? They're just starting out, trying to get to the break-even point. Or are you looking for kind of they're they're in the growth phase where they've been you know past three years, maybe the seven, or they're a little bit more mature. You, are you looking for that client that for that business that they get to a certain point and they just can't break that barrier and move up past that? It, so it, it could be either one. It's it's all a function of how many sales reps you have. That if you don't, if you could be three months out of the gate, you just graduated from an accelerator and have zero sales reps. Yeah, that's there's a value there to be had. But um, I think that this company's been around for about 15 years. So, but they only have three or four sales reps. Time. So it, it sort of depends. There's not there's not a sweet spot. We just, we focus on how many sales reps you have, and that's how when we go and prospect, we'll go through LinkedIn to try to see. If you have, okay, you have five reps. That that's a fit. And maybe just get around the funding. I have a question and then a suggestion. So my question is, on one of the slides you said you increased the sales by five to ten percent. Is that actual data, or is that what you guys are hoping to achieve with your clients? Oh, that's actual. Okay. And my second is so. To tag on to what Julian's saying, I think, so like, if I'm a startup and $3,000 just for assessment, there's no way I'm gonna do that. Not even, I mean, I wouldn't even get through the assessment because $3,000, I mean, if I could put that into marketing on Facebook and probably get a pretty good return, you know, at $10 a day, that's a lot of marketing. So I don't know if you guys have thought about splitting where you have like a lower price for startup entrepreneurs who really don't have because you know, usually by the time you're mature, if you don't have at least one salesperson, you're probably in trouble. Uh, I mean, I don't know a lot of businesses that get to seven plus years that don't have any salesperson at all unless the owner is just kicking it at sales. But the younger, really new, usually don't have time for sales. And there might be a market there that, that I know of nobody is filling. Right. So I don't know, that might be something you guys can look into. I mean, it seems to be what you do as another market for your business and you have a whole different plan, right. it's obviously going to be different. Pricing is going to be needed right. over there. So I don't know, just a suggestion. Thank you. Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused right now. You said this company's been around for 15 years? I uh, know. This, the, the, our oh, scale on demand has been around for about 18 months. Okay, 18 months. So tell me about you. What made you decide to join? Sure. Is this your baby or is uh, So I've been working, uh, our CEO is Doug Johnson. Um, I joined when I actually moved down to Virginia about three months ago. Um, I met Doug um, earlier this summer that being in revenue operations is a perfect fit for me. Uh, my girlfriend is actually in the Navy, so we're gonna be bouncing around over the next couple of years. So this was a perfect fit for me to help build one only scale up itself and then also drive back into the Virginia community as I'm new here as well. Okay, and then you didn't answer the question he asked about your current clients. How many have you worked with? How many have I worked with? Well, not you, but how many have the company, you know, helped with your service? Um, and are they local? Are they, uh, not, not, not in Virginia just yet. Um, most, uh, at Atlanta, because that's where the company started, Charleston, Atlanta. Um, we're at 10 to 15 right now, and I've been on two since I've started. What performance guarantee do you have? Let's say we enter into an agreement to engage you. Uh, a month or so into it, or a month and a half, I'm getting red flags and we're not making our number. Yeah. If I was a car dealership, I would I would put an ad in the paper looking for five people to replace five who would not work. Mm -hmm. you know, I've actually seen those ads. So what is the guarantee? What, what happens if you're not, don't understand, it's just not working or whatever? So uh, we set up our contracts in three month contracts. Um, so the way they set up is they auto renew at the end. So at the 90 days, they would renew at the 60 day point. So we would have a discussion. If it's not working, we can pull the plug at 60 days. So there's no guarantee? Uh, we can work that into the contract if that's something specific. Yeah, I've got a, if, let's say I have a company, I have a baseline. And the bottom line is fellow salespeople are, I'm looking for an increase over that baseline. If I've engaged you and I'm not seeing any kind of movement in that baseline, right. then I'm getting concerned of what I've done with my money. Right. And, and I think that goes with, there's a factor of time associated with it, so that's how why we factor our BDR contracts to six months, is 
it does take time to develop those relationships. And Tyler's been in for about a month or two. If you pull the plug in two months, you're not going to be closing in two months, right? It takes two or three months to develop. You should be closing at four, five, and six. And that's why we have the contract set up with, at the 60 and then 120 day or 150 day. So going based off of that, within 60 days, so what are the measures of success or the measures of completion of, hey, within 60 days, we say you're going to have 40 people in your pipeline or you're going to have 40 prospects, whatever whatever it may be, like, do you have some more? Yeah, so those we would agree with on that um, at the time that we actually signed the contract and we put in the proposal that, yes, within 60 days, you need to have 40 in the pipeline. That's a, that's a pretty black and white system that we would, we would set that up. What happens if you don't accomplish that on your You wouldn't renew for the second three months. But I still end up paying you for whatever. Whatever. And that would, yeah, so that's, that's part of it. Do you have limitations on your knowledge base? Because you, you're, or you get, you're working mostly with application software companies as your sweet spot, or so that's definitely one of our sweet spots. Yeah. I mean, we would have a, a, a limit if we're going into marketing, right? That's not our sweet spot. We would definitely work with someone else or recommend you to a, another firm to, to assist with that. We're not trying to do the whole the whole spectrum. Uh, or do you focus on, on uh, particular industries uh, so you can uh, develop some kind of, uh, of uh, technical expertise in, the, in those industries? Or, or, or do you just apply your skills to wh whatever comes along? So when we go out there and we focus on SaaS, that's all our backgrounds are in uh, what's that? SaaS, software as a service. Oh, software as a service. So we, we focus on that when we go out there because that's everyone that's part of the firm right now has some sort of SaaS experience. Yeah, I think this is the wrong group for you. Okay. These aren't, and I know all these entrepreneurs in here. This is, as, as, as was said, this is a, a bootstrap group. For these people, are, and, and, and uh, um, you know, the comment about $3,000 going into Facebook, that's what's going to happen. I think your audience is more mid-sized companies and more of the Chamber of Commerce crowd. Okay. It's not this crowd. Okay. Yeah. So, and I don't mean to say that disrespectfully, no, no, that's, that's, that's I know these entrepreneurs well. And I guarantee you, that's they're not going to shell out three thousand no, bucks. And guys, yeah. I think just the, the blanket statement here. Uh, that's why we're coming out here, right? This is why I'm testing my own message, yeah. and I appreciate the feedback. That three grand is too much. That tells me maybe that zero to one rep or zero to five may not be our market, right? Yeah. yeah. So th yeah. this this is awesome. Like I'm, I'm loving this. I'm going to ask you for the recording after because we're going to play that. You know, team meeting tomorrow morning, and they're going to flash me all that stuff. So. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so I think you're, yeah, definitely a, a bigger company, mm -hmm. not entrepreneurs. I mean, more of people are starting to go. There's a big market if you guys had access to capital where you're taking a piece of the action. I mean, I've hired very expensive investment bankers and consultants. In the end, there's no guarantee you know any more than I do. So if you gave some testimonials of what you've done, of any of these companies that have popped an IPO or something, because you're talking about huge tech companies and you're trying to take them to the next level, then it would give you some leg grounds to charge whatever you want. But, I mean, I would look at taking a piece of the action if you guys are so successful. I mean, you're getting in on startups and you're kind of looking at flows. I mean, you're talking about a lot of money for a startup to really take it to that level. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And what he was saying earlier, that you might want to consider, maybe for if you're trying to get to the younger startups, lower entry for to work with you guys, and then capitalize on a percentage of right. their right. profits. If you can self-finance your labor, right. you can do it. If not, I mean, that's your investment. If you guys are really good at what exactly. you're doing, you're taking companies to the next level. But... I mean, why would I hire you if you have no testimonials? I mean, because you're basically a sales force, right? Sure. I mean, yeah, and yeah. I apologize for not bringing any. There's another position. Instead of taking equity, you can take a royalty, a small little royalty, as long as you're not too big of a leech, taking off of just a small slice. One of the other things is to, I think, maybe in the presentation, just a recommendation of the presentation, as I said, larger group, yeah. establish one, and then put start emphasizing the benefits of hiring you instead of hiring a full-time salesperson and incurring all of the you know all yeah. the obligations you do when you uh, take one on 
you know, base and all that. Instead of having a base in commission, we come in for this flat rate, you have us for a period of time, you use us for this period of time, then you make a decision if you're going to engage further. But it gets you up and running and, and going with that. So I think maybe that's really on the presentation pitch where right. you're changing, where you're you're augmenting their sales force as you're doing with that one client you want to give an example of. Most owners have no clue how to manage a sales force. Yeah. How to set expectations for them, what kind of results and performance they need, all those kinds of things you can speak right to that entrepreneur right. and help them kind of paint a picture because then you become very worth it. It's just um, but I think that So you're uh, you're looking at people who are ready to hire that salesperson, not this bootstrapping <coughs> I don't have a to begin with, I'm trying to do everything myself, like we're right. on a paper hanger and I you give this money that it's gonna cost and you know the bootstrapper freaks out on that. Right. But you need somebody who's ready, who's already got things in position, they're kind of looking for someone yeah, but sure. they can't afford, they don't even know where to begin and how do they promise of a lifestyle for a full-time right. sales rep and how do they even get somebody that knows what they're doing so so you absolutely fill in that space and that's where you need to focus because I was kind of getting at, at during your presentation but then when it was going to other things and I was picturing the startup that's where it became a little muddy gotcha. yeah. and that, that's so, that's on me and to make no, sure it's not you. it's just we're, we're just helping you um, put it together for the next place which you're right you need to go after these like Chris said mid-sized companies people who are ready that salesperson and just you know it's really it's, it's not niche. you're going to babysit you're going to babysit the entrepreneurs because yeah. I don't I mean yeah. <laughs> you're going to then you need to change your model a little bit and take a bigger piece of the action because you're going to babysit the guys yes they don't know that they're not confident enough to do the next step it's not that they don't know how they need someone not confident enough to stand up in front of the room or and time. pitch I mean or they don't have the funds yeah, yeah or they don't have the money yeah. Time. I, th I think it's where you're augmenting. You're looking at the company. It's you know the owner's been selling, getting out there, finally saying, you know, I got to stop. You know, I got out of the field. I got to concentrate on the product. Where they've got one or two salespeople already. It's just not you know kind of clicking for them. You come in and augment their sales force, and you help give them structure and really run that sales force for them for a period of time, and then give them that boost. You know, at that moment, at that point, you could just you can discuss well. I can go further. One of the other approaches I've seen where you come into existing companies and they have an established revenue line. Now, if you're gutsy enough to say, I won't take anything until we get you above that line, that's a strong message. Yeah. I've seen people do it, but that's gutsy. Yeah. That means you've got to have absolute confidence that you're going to boost the line. Yeah. So it kind of goes back to what I asked earlier, right? Who is your target company, right? Yeah. Um, so all that boils down to that company or that business owner that ha cannot get past that plateau of, hey, how do I get here to the next level? Sure. Once you identify and say, hey, this is our, our target. Um, so the Mid-Atlantic is good. If you're doing IT companies, because yeah. you've got cyber, uh, Cybercom up in Quantico, yeah. you've got all these IT companies up and down yeah. between DC down yeah. to the Southeast. So if that's what you're targeting, I mean, you're, right. you're, you're in a good area. Yes. You're in a good area, but you gotta be able to say, you know, this is who we're going after and this is why, because they're gonna get those DOD contracts. They're yeah. going to get to this point and you gotta take the business owner from working in the business to working on the business. Right. And once you once you can make that transition for them, that's where you're gonna add that value. And yeah, that opens up. How much experience do you all have with uh, getting government contracts? Not from a, not from a, Norfolk area. Um, right. the other That's one of those things you need to start bringing somebody on that has some expertise in that because you're playing in this market. Right. You're playing with people that are yeah. either in or they're trying to get into a little piece of the action of the government mm -hmm. markets because it's huge in this area. Okay. So that would be just recommendation maybe down the road if you're going to really try to expand in this, this target area. Mike, like one of the flags I've got on your business model is the experience itself because, again, I've been professional sales my whole life and to really sell something you really have to understand the product and you have to understand the channels and just the intricacies that you know some somebody that's going to hire you as a sales force you know what's your ramp up as far as really understanding my market my product my delivery you know those kinds of things I don't know you might want to I don't know if you're broad, you know, take on any industry, but I'm just sitting here brainstorming yeah. for you. Maybe you should look.
look at some verticals and become experts in those verticals, you know, because I just, one of the flags I would have is that how can you be everything to everybody, you know, in sales? Yeah, and right. at least from a SaaS, and that's why we frame the conversation back to SaaS, is still 80% of SaaS is all the same, right? It's the same metric, same model, same pitch. Yes, when, as soon as you get to a piece of hardware, definitely a little bit different. That's why we don't focus on from outbound when it comes in and down. That's, it's, it's all the same, at least foundational pitch, and that's why also we don't close out there. So if we're all getting you, if you're an experienced sales rep, then we're going to get everything so you don't have to prospect anymore. It's the same pitch, what's the value prop, what are the bottom line questions you need that you need to then do to take it to final close. Don't understand. So Sorry, are you making appointments for an existing sales force or something? So that, that's that's one way to do it, right? Exactly. But it's the it's the whole story, right? How many times have you had a, a BDR fresh out of school that needs to learn how to sell, learn how to be in a corporate environment, and then learn the value prop, right? All we need to do is learn the value prop. What's the value prop? Document that right at the start, and now okay, yes, setting appointments, qualifying those efficiently for someone. Here. And that's why we do we do focus on B two B SaaS as a as a target market. And if you could uh, lower your rates in exchange for a small amount of equity in the company, then then that would provide motivation right. for you, and and it would make your services more affordable right. for early stage companies. Right. Absolutely. If I were a business owner and was to be hiring you or hiring my own sales rep, why would we hire you instead of hiring someone? just like you for our company. Sure, so if you, if you were to hire me or hire scale up, over the course of a year, it's more expensive to hire us, I'll tell you that straight right. up. Um, but it's all about the risk, right? Do you want to carry the risk of the whole head count, the, all the benefits to go associated with it? And once you start accruing that, really up until a year, it's equal. And that, and that way, you don't actually have to train someone up in terms of bring them on board. We, we just come in and it's all performance. It's, right, it's the performance that you guys are talking about that we built in the contract. Not disparaging, but that's what it is. You're hiring somebody who knows how to do much of this, look at a dozen of bat and street, identify the customers, go after it, and be dogged and determined to make those calls yeah. and get enough in the funnel, which we all know as salespeople, that is just that, that's the hardest they just met that discipline oh, yeah. getting those rejections and keep pumping that funnel full. Yeah. That that takes a weird type yeah, sort of uh, personality. <laughs> So, but you're a pretty good question. I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 I used to run a stable with you all. So I, I know, know you did. That's, yeah. yeah. that's, that's, that's been that. my hardest transition. So, same, same company. company. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm here to answer any more. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll stay up here all day and take the feedback. No, we have to send five people. That's fine. I might have to get a refill. But what can win money cups do for you? Um, so definitely you've done half of it, right? You've grilled me up here and I, I appreciate it, right? Uh, I'm sure you guys will all get grilled up here at some point. So that, that's that's definitely one. Um, now that we're sort of into the one that comes community, I know there's one up in Williamsburg. So just how, how do we get this out, right? How do we get more of that and how do we continue to test this pitch? Is really what um, we can really can't go to the chamber. I'm sorry? I go to the chamber. The chambers. I would get in front of the chamber. Thank you for coming today, and give me a cup for the next 999,000. <laughs> <laughs>